What if I told you there is a space trip where the final destination is also your grave? A one-way trip, decreed not by a technical failure, but by the fundamental laws of the universe itself. A manned mission to Jupiter isn't a journey of exploration like the others. It is a sentence of permanent exile. In the next few minutes, you will understand why, upon crossing the threshold of the gas giant, the word return simply disappears from the dictionary of physics and biology. This isn't science fiction hyperbole. It is a cold, brutal, and detailed analysis of why humanity, with all its ambition and current technology, will never be able to return from a trip to the king of planets. Every great journey begins with a first step, and in the case of Jupiter, that step is a gigantic and treacherous leap across the solar system. The outbound trip, despite being frighteningly long and dangerous, is paradoxically the easy part of the plan. Leaving the safety of Earth's orbit, our ship would need a brutal speed boost, a delta V, the currency of the universe, of over six kilometers per second. This after having already overcome Earth's gravity, which demands its own 11.2 kilometers per second. It is a colossal energy budget just to get on the right cosmic highway. Unmanned ships like NASA's Juno took five to six years to cross the almost 800 million kilometers that separate us from the gas giant, and that was using gravitational assists from other planets to pick up speed. For a human crew, this would mean years locked in a metal can, an unprecedented psychological and physical experiment. The astronauts would have to deal with constant solar radiation, and more dangerously, with galactic cosmic rays, high energy particles coming from distant supernovae that pass through the ship's fuselage and the human body, increasing the risk of cancer and neurological damage. At the same time, their bodies would be devastated by microgravity. Without the constant force of gravity, muscles atrophy and bones lose density at an alarming rate, potentially reaching a 20% loss of muscle mass in just two weeks. The cardiovascular system itself weakens and bodily fluids shift to the head, potentially causing vision problems and increased cranial pressure. It would be years of rigorous exercise and iron discipline just to arrive at the destination without being too debilitated to function. But let's imagine the impossible. The crew survived. The systems worked. After years of cosmic silence, the colossal silhouette of Jupiter begins to take over the window. The bands of turbulent clouds larger than continents and the great red spot, a storm larger than our entire planet, greeting the travelers. Arriving in Jupiter's orbit would be, without a doubt, one of the greatest feats in human history. And it is exactly there, at the moment of greatest triumph, that hope ends and harsh reality sets in. It is the point where exploration turns into a trap with no exit. Of course, the idea of landing on Jupiter itself makes no sense. It is a gas giant without a solid surface. The real prize, the target that fuels the imagination of scientists and science fiction, is one of its moons, Europa, a world covered in ice that hides a global ocean of salt water, with more water than all of Earth's oceans combined. It is perhaps the most promising place in the solar system to find life. But landing on Europa isn't a mission of exploration. It is voluntarily entering a frozen and radioactive trap Let's imagine our capsule approaching. The view isn't of clouds, but of a bright white billiard ball crossed by reddish fractures that extend for thousands of kilometers. The first enemy is invisible and relentless, radiation. Nestled in the heart of Jupiter's magnetic field, the surface of Europa is bombarded without mercy by a stream of energized particles. The radiation is so intense that the ice itself can glow in the dark with a ghostly shine, greenish or bluish. For the astronauts, it would be the end. The dose on the surface is about 5,400 millisieverts per day. The lethal dose for a human being is approximately 5,000 millisieverts total. In other words, in less than 24 hours, 
the crew would receive a death sentence by radiation poisoning. If, by a miracle of shielding, the crew survived to attempt the landing, they would find a second nightmare. The surface is a cryogenic desert with temperatures reaching minus 180 degrees Celsius at the equator. Worse, it isn't a smooth skating rink. Studies suggest that the equatorial surface might be a forest of razor-sharp ice spikes called penitentes that can reach 15 meters in height. These bizarre formations, created by the sublimation of ice under the distant sun, would make any landing attempt a game of Russian roulette, with the chance of the ship being impaled or tipping over on absolutely alien terrain. And even if the landing were perfect, the mission would be, in practice, lost. The astronauts would be trapped in a deadly cold and radioactive landscape on top of an ice crust up to 25 kilometers thick. The prize, the ocean of liquid water, potentially teeming with life, would be right beneath their feet, but as unreachable as the distant stars. The depth of the Mariana Trench, the deepest point on Earth, is only 11 kilometers. The promise of life on Europa is the perfect bait, but the moon's environment is the guarantee that once you step on its ice, you aren't going anywhere. Until now, we spoke about the impossibility of surviving at the destination, but the true answer to the title of this video lies in two insurmountable barriers that condemn any mission, even one that just wants to orbit the planet and return, radiation and gravity. First, the radiation, on a scale that defies comprehension. As we saw in the example of Europa, Jupiter's magnetic field is a deadly trap. It is almost 20,000 times stronger than Earth's and captures particles from the solar wind, accelerating them and creating radiation belts with an intensity that our brains can't even process. The environment around Jupiter is, literally, a radioactive hell millions of times more intense than Earth's Van Allen belts. Probes like Juno needed a titanium vault of almost 200 kilograms just to protect their most sensitive electronics. And even so, their systems suffered damage throughout the mission. For a human being, exposure would be a quick death sentence. There is no shielding technology, not even in our most optimistic dreams, that is light enough to be launched and at the same time, effective enough to protect humans for weeks or months in that environment. And that leads us to the second barrier, perhaps the most fundamental of all, gravity. Jupiter isn't just the largest planet. It is so massive that it contains 2.5 times the mass of all other planets in the solar system combined. This creates an incredibly deep gravity well. To escape Earth's pull, a ship needs to reach an escape velocity of 11.2 kilometers per second. To escape Jupiter, even from its upper atmosphere, that velocity jumps to almost 60 kilometers per second. The rocket equation, the relentless tyrant of space engineering, tells us that the amount of fuel necessary to reach that speed would be so absurd that we wouldn't even be able to launch the rocket from Earth with the technology we have today it would be necessary to launch a gigantic rocket loaded with fuel for the return, which in turn would need an even more gigantic rocket to be launched. It is a logistical paradox without a solution. That is why the missions we send there, like Galileo and Juno, were designed to be suicidal. They used the gravity of other planets to pick up speed on the way out, but never carried fuel for the return. It was a one-way trip from the start. At the end of their useful lives, to not risk contaminating moons like Europa with terrestrial microbes, they were thrown on purpose into Jupiter's atmosphere to be incinerated and crushed by the pressure. For a manned ship to attempt a return, beyond the fuel problem, there would still be the problem of time. Earth and Jupiter need to be aligned in a specific way for an efficient return trip. This could mean waiting months or even years in orbit being slowly cooked by the planet's lethal radiation. Physics and biology conspire to guarantee one thing. Once you enter Jupiter's gravitational embrace, you don't leave anymore. Jupiter, the king of planets, named in honor of the king of gods, 
is a jealous sovereign. He attracts us with his majestic beauty and his tempting mysteries, but his laws are absolute and his sentence is final. The combination of his crushing atmosphere, his deadly radiation, and his insurmountable gravity transforms him not into a destination, but into a cosmic prison. Returning from Jupiter isn't an engineering challenge to be solved with more creativity or bigger budgets. It is a fundamental impossibility dictated by the forces of the universe. A trip there would be the peak of human exploration, and at the same time, its final act. An eternal farewell without return. Space exploration teaches us a lot about other worlds, but also about our own limits. And Jupiter, with its relentless greatness, teaches us the humblest lesson of all. There are giants we cannot conquer. If this hypothetical trip sparked your curiosity, leave in the comments which other giant of the solar system you would like us to explore in a future analysis. And don't forget to subscribe for more trips to the most fascinating and dangerous corners of our universe.